friends, Joy back here today with a five card series, um, kind of uh, doing a study on color and how it affects your mood. Um, I don't particularly watercolor often, so I've been kind of experimenting with that as well. So uh, let's get into it. Um, I am using the African Daisy paint a flower stamp set from all to new for all five of my cards and what I did with that was stamp that using my stamping positioning tool uh, with I believe it was VersaFine Clear Nocturne ink and then I heat embossed it in clear and I stamped that onto Canton XL watercolor paper on the smooth side and um like I said, I heat embossed that in a clear powder just because I was going to be watercoloring and I <clears throat> wanted a little bit of a well because that kind of contains your color for you, especially if you're not an expert watercolorist, which I definitely am not. So you'll see that I'm embossing that. Um, and what gave me the idea for this project was uh, I took a course recently from Altenew um, called In the Mood for Color. And the instructor talked a lot about what color means. And I never really thought of it that way. But when, when she broke it down, it really did make sense to me that certain colors are calming. Think about what colors you put in your bedroom. Usually it's a soft blue or soft beiges because it's calming. Um, I know in my crafty place, I have a lot of uh, turquoises because it makes me happy. And I've got some yellows sprinkled in there um, because it's full of energy and cheer and optimism. So um, it really kind of made me pay attention to what color was and allowed me to practice my watercoloring. So all the way around, I thought that this was a great way to practice um, in addition to heat embossing the African flower, the African daisy. I also use the Sakatoa stamp set to use their, um, and, and just a, a sentiment. I liked it. I thought um, a simple sentiment was perfect for this because I'm going to cut down this panel kind of small to make it a focal point on a bigger layer. So that's kind of where I am um, in that aspect. Um, I left the first part of my watercoloring out, and that was just because I was just getting down a rough color of, of my different Karen markers um, just so that I could dry it and go back in with fine details, which you're going to see here coming up in just a second. So I am trying to grab my, uh, to grow my channel. So if you feel so inclined, I would love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel and even ring the bell if you wouldn't mind, just because that lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job and that they will make my videos towards the top of the algorithm. Um, so I would dearly appreciate that. So you're going to come in, see me come in with the yellow flower first. And for that, I used my Karen markers in a neon yellow and a gold. And then for the centers, I used just the, uh, a brown of some sort. And sometimes I dotted in some of the uh, brown or yellow with that. And then I brought in orange next and what orange designates is usually health happiness and courage i never thought of it that way i always thought it was more of an energetic car or color so i was surprised to know that health happiness and courage so i think we all need a little bit of courage and happiness in this world right now it's been a very tough place to dwell and so I'm going to send this out to a crafty friend um, once I am complete with my card. Uh, you're going to see I also, on my next card, incorporate orange and yellow together. Because like I said, I think orange and yellow kind of mean health, happiness, energy, cheer, optimism, and 
this place needs that. So going back to my watercolor, sometimes you'll see me take my markers directly to the paper and then bring in a damp brush and spread the water around. Other times you will see me drop the water in and then just kind of lightly tap my marker in and let the water carry the color. And that just kind of gives it the an ethereal look, kind of cool, very organic. Um, I like both techniques. I sometimes struggle with just letting it go. So I tend to color more than I do drop the dropping the color in to the, you know, the wet areas, but I'm trying to get better at that and I'm going to continue on my journey with watercolor to to get to a point that I'm okay with a loosey goosey. I've spent most of my crafting time using Copics and that's a very controlled uh, color mechanism. So I am trying to do that. Um, so you have to let me know if I'm accomplishing that um, in my coloring. Um, and you, keep, you see I keep fiddling with it. Now I've got the actual orange, I think. I think I got my colors kind of backed up here. So the orange, um, health and happiness, and I'm just using an orange Karen marker along with the brown. I drop in some yellow into the centers along with the brown just to brighten it up a little bit. And I will come back in towards the end of the video and I will add some white highlights with a gel pen um, just to add some further detail, but I think that that came out rather nice. Um, and I don't know if you're noticing, but I do try to leave a little bit of white space so that I can try uh, to let it be organic. And you're going to see a little trick I did. Um, I had some a little spot on my watercolor panel. And so I added clean, fresh water to that spot. And I took a, a clean baby wipe and I just dabbed it up and it almost worked as an eraser. So that is one thing that I do love about watercolor is that there's room for error and there's also room to clean it up. So I think that this might end up being a medium that I become more friendly with and I continue to explore. Um, let me know what you think I should do different or if you would like to see more on my channel. And it appears that I'm back to the yellow again because I'm not happy with the uh, with the leaves. And this is where I'm adding in some of the neon yellow. And I like the fact that it's got a little bit of a brighter tone and it highlights some of the areas and just really makes that yellow pop. Um, I will say that's, that there it is i'm fixing it that center leaf was like a hot mess for me scribbling on it thank goodness i remember to fix it because that would have been embarrassing to leave as a uh as a finished card now i'm bringing in my blue card i happen to love blue like i said it brings on calm and tranquility i've got my craft room um in white and turquoises because it's my happy place and I try to channel my inner zen and all the things that I love. Um, you're going to see that I went direct to paper in the center there because I really wanted those centers to be the darkest. And then I wash it out slightly with uh, my paintbrush, a damp paintbrush. But I don't think I have a lot of... Uh, lighter colors mixed in as well and then you see me going back in with that yellow just to brighten up the centers i think that makes a huge difference especially on the blue card and now my final card um i went with a red magenta marker so for me that kind of means love passion but pink means sensitive caring and sweet and when i think about the people i love i want to be all of those things so i chose a color in between pink and red and I love it. Now I came in with coordinating colors and I'm just doing a quick wash around my cards um, just to add entrance, entrance, I can't speak, interest and more color. I think it's absolutely a necessary thing to use on my card. Um, otherwise it's too plain and just doesn't look uh, very planned out. 
And again, I'm back to this blue. I love the blue. But do you see I have no rhyme or reason? I have, like, I don't know why. I'm putting the colors where I am. I am just letting the card and the water speak to me. And this is a freeing exercise. And I am so glad that I took this class. Um, now, in the class, they talked about a bunch of other techniques that you could use. But I chose to focus on watercolor, like I said, because... I want to get better at it and you're going to see me bring in um, my Prima Sparks that I watered down and I'm just splattering everywhere and then and I did that on all five cards and then I popped each of the front panels up on uh, a brushed gold panel and then applied it to a to a black card base. Uh, I did trim down that car front panel with the flowers down to three and a half by four and three quarters just because I wanted it smaller and condensed um, but that's my preference you don't have to do that um, but I think it turned out great now I am taking some gold sequins and I'm just scattering those around where I see fit using my uh, picker tool and uh, I think it adds a lot uh, of interest here and now you're going to see me bring in all five cards which I love I love the way they came out I think it's a great gift set to give away to someone which is probably what I will do so again I thank you for watching I would ask that you would consider liking subscribing ringing that bell doing all of the good things um, to make my channel grow if you're so inclined to um, if you make a comment, I promise I will come back and answer and say hello. I really want to get to know anybody and everybody that follows me. And I just truly appreciate the opportunity to bring my creations to you. And I hope that through my mistakes, through my triumphs, that you learn something. Maybe you uh, find something inspiring in it. But uh, I really do appreciate you being here. Now, I am part of the Alta New Educator Certification Program. I'm currently in Level 2, which is part of what this class in the mood was for. Um, and this is just me demonstrating some of the techniques part of, as part of that. If you are interested in any of the Alta New uh, classes, I will link those below, as well as the AECP if you want to check out that program. Um, I know that there's a waiting list and you have to submit your work and, you know, it's just a process that you have to work through, but I really love the, uh, love the process. I loved level one. I learned so much. I saw my card making grow, brought me to levels that I never thought possible. Um, and at level two is doing the same thing. It's making me think out of the box. It's making me create more. And any time that I get to create, and I get to share, and I get to get to be a little inky, I am so, so very happy. So, I encourage you, no matter what level you're on, um, in the craft world, to get out your supplies, try something new, stretch your imagination, and just have fun. And, and I truly mean that, so... Uh, again, I would truly, sincerely love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, until next time, keep crafting. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.